it is towards the end of April and the sun has finally come out and it just makes tea look magical. Guys, sun appreciation. <laughs> Peeps, we are at 300 subscribers. We have made it. Like, I'm so grateful to every single one of you guys. It might not seem a lot to you, but to me it's like, whoa, 300 peeps are like here to support me and all the hours that I've put into the videos and it just makes it so much more worth it and such a motivation. I want to say thank you to Miriam Tilson who recently put my link under one of her Q&A videos which got me some of you guys. And thank you to Arlebeen, Arlisha, who also gave me a shout out on her YouTube. And it's crazy because I've gained like over a hundred subs and you guys are all wonderful. And I'm so thankful that you guys have actually, you know, like decided to support me. So thank you. It means so much. Every single one of you counts. So honestly, thanks. <laughs> Okay guys, so this is the last part of the Q&A, Q&A part 3, where I'll be answering the rest of your questions. So the first question is by La Fleur Ropes, Leah, I'm really sorry if I butchered your name, I'm really sorry. If you could have a conversation with any artist, living or dead, who would it be and why? I mean this, this question is so good and creative and crazy, like, there's so many artists out there like especially including the ones that are dead it's like it's insane to have to like pick one and I don't think I can I mean I'm gonna ask you guys if you can answer this question because I'd love to read them in the comments I mean I probably would pick an artist that's alive because most of my inspiration is coming from current artists but I guess I just can't decide you know which one I'd like to talk to. So I'm gonna ask you that. I'm really sorry for not being able to answer it properly, but yeah, I'd love to hear your views on that. So Miriam Tilson asks, do you want to live off your art? And if so, do you want to sell your own work or do illustration or comics animation? I would love to live off my own art. And I'd probably want to sell my own work as going into something like illustration or doing comics and animation is a bit more restrictive. Whereas if I'm just selling the own, my own work that I'm producing, I'm pretty much free and open to produce any type of art that I'd like or that I feel passionate about. I'm always someone who's like changing my mind a lot with my subjects and the mediums that I work with as well. So I think being able to sell my own work would allow that freedom and so that's probably what I'd love to do. She also asks how did you start drawing and when which is really similar to Calamity Valentine's question which is why and when did you start making art? I started drawing and making art from when I was really little but I properly started taking art seriously in 2016 and 2000 and 17 properly I was I was not in a good place mentally um, I was really unwell and I was going hospital weekly and I think that's the only thing that really helped me have a focus something that allowed my mind to wander without me having to think so hard about it and it's also the one thing that I've been really able to stick with after such a long time. But because art is so versatile and is so broad, I've been able to like explore within it. And so that's why I guess. Calamity Valentine also asks, Swabby, <laughs> what do you enjoy most about it? And that's literally just like what I said. I just love the fact that there's so many different ways to make art and it's so broad and versatile like you can experiment with different mediums you can you know you can diff try different subjects uh, and I think that's what I love most about it it's something that you can you are constantly growing with and developing and learning and so you just don't get bored of it Shenai Jujie or Senai Chuche or Shenai I'm not sure <laughs> she asks do you keep uh, sketchbooks. Yes, I do. At first, that's something that I like to do because I was showing my progress and it is something that shows my progress, but I think I'm hoarding a lot of my pieces now. Like, I need to start making art that I can sell or that I can make prints of or that, or that I can give away because now I'm finishing my sketchbooks really quickly and they're just really collecting up, so that's something that I need to think about. She also asks, is there anything that you do to get into the work mindset, especially after a break? 
and what are some things that help you stay focused while working on an art piece? After a break or after a bit of an art slump, I probably mostly watch art videos and based on the art that I like to make, so maybe landscape videos or gouache or watercolour, anything that be, you know that I love to do myself that really motivates me and makes me feel like, oh I really want to do a piece now, I really want to do that and so that really helps get me into the mindset because after watching a good video I'm like yeah I want to try that you know I want to do a gouache piece I feel so inspired so that's something that I do and things that help me stay focused while working on an art piece is watch art videos just listen to the person talking or maybe I'll put a bit of music on sometimes I just work in silence that's just the best way I focus but I love to take breaks so after working on it a little bit I'll take a break maybe have a snack maybe just you know, take a little breather, check social media, whatever, and then I'll come back to it. I always need them little mini breaks to help me keep going so that I don't get like sick of the peas. And if it's a, if I'm working on it for quite a long time, I'll probably just give it a day's break. These next questions are really similar. SB Art asks, what are your main artistic goals for the future? Bilal John asks, what are your visions for the future? What would be the most ideal outcome for you if you pursued your art? And Hala asks, where do you see yourself five years from now? Okay, so my kind of most recent artistic goals are probably to focus on my actual art skills, um, getting better at using gouache and watercolours, like get more experience within mediums, make larger pieces and more original pieces. I just want to, you know, like level up my art skills that bit more so that, you know, I can sell my art and it is something that people will be interested in and something worth buying um my visions for the future would probably be to be able to sell my art you know to be able to become successful in what i'm doing potentially open a patreon where you know i'll be getting i'll be able to send people original pieces support other artists you know, develop myself and that's probably what the ideal outcome would be if I did pursue my art, you know, is to be able to do that. And where I see myself in five years from now, that is the most craziest question. Because the future freaks me out and I feel like my life's already over, even though I'm 21. And so I'm just trying to focus on the now, but I guess in the idealist, probably non-realistic dream world, I'd love to maybe be in a film or go traveling and see more of the world and sell art, etc, etc. But I mean, who knows, <laughs> I might still be at home painting away, but yeah. And that's the end of the Q&A video. Thank you so much for all your amazing questions. And I also hope that you guys enjoyed watching me paint this gemstone. So until next time, guys, bye.